Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, you know, sometimes when we share God's truth, it, it, it just, we just get overwhelmed by this truth. And, and sometimes, I, I go through this a lot. You know, you see these things and they are so plain to you. But you look around, nobody seems to understand what you're saying. Ah, but these things are true. You see, because you know it and because you know where you got it from, I didn't get these things by reading a book. I didn't get this thing. I got it from the place of fellowshipping with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus said something in, in John chapter 6. Uh, more especially, you know, in John chapter 6, Jesus was talking about anyone who eats my flesh and drink my blood. See, from verse 50, you know, he, he was talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And now many times we don't understand that when Jesus is teaching in the public, he teaches in parables. He taught the people in parables. Now, we, 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 we take communion today and we eat the unleavened bread and then we drink the wine. Now, we say we are eating the body of Jesus and we're drinking his blood. Now, many times we do that without understanding. It's not the physical eating that gives you life. Now, the same thing Jesus said in, in, in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. He says, anyone, and behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice. Now, he was not talking to the world. He was talking to believers. He was talking to his own. That later was addressed to a church. Why would Jesus say to the church, I stand at the door and knock? If you will hear my voice and open the church. Why would Jesus say that to the church? Think about it. You see, because right now, we are being led by his voice. Every child of God is led by his voice. And, and secondly, what did he mean by if any man hears my voice and open, I will come in and sup with him. That sup with him, it's not to make prepare food and let us eat together no it means i will come and i will reveal myself to him many pastors i'm talking particularly about pastors right now many pastors when when they talk about hearing the voice of god they are too concerned about hearing God's voice concerning the assignments that God has given to them. Oh Lord, what do we do next? Lord, we need to build a church. How do we build the next church? How do we get this thing done? How do we get that done? How do we get that done? Listen, it's dangerous. It's dangerous because you may do all that, those work. And, and let me tell you the truth. When you ask those questions, many times it's not Jesus that answers you. It's an angel that answers you. So how do you know? Oh yes, I'll tell you. Listen, the work that you have been called to do, has a script and that script is in the hands of an angel see the whole story of your life is in the hands of an angel that's what you call your guardian angel and then when you're called to do special thing from for the lord there's a special angel that i've been giving to you now what's the relationship between you and the angel he has the script now when when you are carrying out that assignment it is the angel's responsibility to be bringing the knowledge of the script to you so many times you say the Holy Spirit spoke to me. It's not really the Holy Spirit. It's an angel that is speaking to you. Now, how do you know the difference? Knowledge. Knowledge. And then what they are talking about. When the Holy Spirit... See, <clears throat> now you wonder why Jesus would say, Oh, may the Lord give us understanding. I really pray the Lord opens your heart to understand. Jesus said, on that day, Many will come and say, we did many mighty works in your name. And I wish Jesus had said, shut up your lie. didn't do this in my name or with my power. No. He said, and I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Okay. So if you never knew them, Lord Jesus, how come they did many mighty works in your name? I, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Now, what happened? Is it true that they are going to do many mighty works in his name? Yes, the people will do many mighty works in his name. So how is he going to deny them? I'll tell you why. Listen, you're working for Jesus. He will reward you. Doesn't mean he will take you to heaven. Everyone who works for Jesus will be rewarded. 
But the only people he will take with him are the people who know him and who understand him. He's not going to take the best soul winner to heaven. Oh, this will shock you. He's not going to take the highest giver to heaven. No. Mm -mm. Your money will not count. The amount of people you have preached to will not count. The amount of miracles you have done on the earth will not count. What's going to count? Do you know him? Do you know him? So when he says, if you open the door, of course he's talking about the door of your heart. Now that's why he said, I am knocking. I am knocking. Now while you're doing your assignment, while you're thinking of the next crusade to hold, while you're thinking of the next big thing you want to do for God, he says, Jesus, because you're doing all those things by the angel. You're doing all those things with the angels assisting you. Now Jesus himself says, in the midst of that, I am standing at the door and I'm knocking. Will you hear my voice? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Will you hear my voice? Will you open up? Will you let me sup with you? Now, when Jesus comes, how is he going to come? Of course, he's coming through the Holy Ghost. Now, when he comes, what is he going to do? He's going to start telling you about himself. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will take of him and shall reveal to us. Not the assignment. No, he's not talking about assignment. He's not talking about where to go preach to. He's talking about this is who I am. Jesus said in Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, from verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your soul. Learn of me. Brothers and sisters, it's not the works that will take us to heaven. It is how much we know him. The people he's coming for are the people that know him. The people that know him. So the question is, sir, ma, brother, sister, do you know Jesus Christ personally? That's a question I leave you to consider and think about. Until tomorrow, God bless you. Bye-bye.